You want me to do that? No countdown? Oh, okay. Well, shit. Hello, everybody. Welcome, welcome, welcome. Please believe it. Let me put this down. That's right. Welcome to Have a Nice Podcast. That's right. Where it's another night with Roxanne Shante, and I got some hip hop stories for you, baby. Well, tonight we are going to talk about where the fuck is the baby? Now, you may be wondering what baby I'm talking about. Hold on, I had to uncross my legs because I don't know why I was trying to sit here like as if my inner thighs were slim because they not. And that shit had me uncomfortable. So, <sighs> okay, now I feel better. I had to let, you know, you got to let, sometimes you just got to let the meat settle. Okay, so I'm settled now. Okay, I'm good. So let me give big shout outs to uh, Ms. Virgo, British. Hey, uh, Bernard Latimer. Hey, Gary. Hey, Gary. How are you? Remember I told you we're doing this like as if, you know, that same little TV show when we was kids. I'm going to call your name. If you're in here, tell a friend to tell a friend that Roxanne Shante is up here telling motherfucking hip hop stories again. Well, I need to take you to a really good year, 1987. 1987. And for those of you who know me, you know that I had a baby very early. Let me pick up here. Hey, Antoine. Hey, John. Hey, Daryl. How are you? Okay. Y yes, I did say hi to you. Yes, I did. Okay. I love you too. Okay. So anyway, hey, Angel. Okay. Now back to the doctor's story. So 1986, I'm Roxanne Roxanne. Life is good, but complicated because I'm a teen and I just became a teen mom. I just became a teen mom 10 days after my birthday. And um, I guess when I think back on it, it was a, it was a crazy time to be a teen mom, to be going on stage, to be doing shows, to be traveling around and responsible for so many other people's households that I didn't get a chance to stay home and be that mom. Literally, I didn't get a chance to stay home. Like I was back on the road on this stage and he was only 17 days old. Now, you know, back in the days, they used to say you can't bring a motherfucking baby outside unless, you know, six weeks. So you had went back for your six week checkup. But 17 days old, my first show. And the crew, which is the juice crew, the juice crew got so used to being able to travel with a baby. So I remember my first show when I brought the baby, you know, and um, I'm surrounded by only young men. So we're not even talking grown men. We're talking young men. So it's a real difference because they're not holding his motherfucking head. His shit is bobbling, but everybody want to hold him to be able to say that they can hold a baby. You know, they giving him, they doing the football hole before people even knew that the football hole was a good hole or a good way to hold him. You know, they literally picking him up by the t-shirt you know, just if some snaps would have came loose, he would have hit the ground. You know, when I tell you that it is only by blessing that he lived and survived tour with a teen mom and everybody else, please believe it. So we go to the show. And while we're at the show, one of the things that was surprising to the promoter was that you're a teen mother and you're outside already and the weather was still a little chilly and you have the baby with you. And he looked at me and he kind of shook his head and he was like, okay. And I was like, all right, you know me, Shantae. There's a lot about my life. You know, y'all seen the movie. Y'all know how shit can be. Hey, Jared. Hey, Lorenzo. Hey, Noah. How are you? Okay, if I missed any names, they'll scroll back and they'll let me know because I'm definitely going to shout everybody out. But I just wanted to tell you the story about where the fuck is the baby. So, I go on stage. Now, here's the thing. When I go on stage, because I had just had this new little human and because I was still a baby myself, I felt that I need to see him. I need to have eye contact with whoever's holding him because I wasn't going to let no strangers hold him. So now it's like, if I'm on stage, then Biz is holding him. If I'm on stage, then Shan is holding him. If I'm on stage, then Cool G Rap is holding him or Polo is holding him. You know what I mean? The only ones that didn't get a chance to hold him were the DJs. Why? Because DJs got a whole fucking records. So you know what I'm saying? So they always holding their records and shit like that. And they see their records to be more important than anything else. So I go on stage. While I'm up on stage, I knew I handed the baby to Biz. So Biz is holding the baby, but then it's my turn to start rhyming with Biz. 
So when Biz was on stage at first, you know, because beginning now, remember, I just had him only 17 days ago. So I, I'm not too familiar with making sure that I have him all the time. You know, that's just one of the things about being a teen mom. I just wasn't sure about that fact. So all of a sudden, my main thing was, as I'm saying my rhymes, all of a sudden I think to myself, I look at Biz, like, where the fuck is the baby? And then this motherfucker hits me with the, I'm like, what do you mean? So then he was like, so then when I look over, I see DJ Polo has the baby. Okay, so now I could go back to my other rhymes. So, you know, I'm out there, I'm Shanti and the rhymes are deaf. Just rap so fresh till I get out of breath. Then I look over at Polo, he don't have a baby. So now I'm looking at Polo like, where the fuck is the baby? And then he hits me with the same motherfucking shit. So I'm like, now I look out in the crowd, everybody's like, thinking that we doing some motherfucking new dance, but this ain't no motherfucking new dance. This is them telling me that they don't know. And this is me saying like, yo, I don't know. You know what I'm saying? So everybody's in the crowd like, yeah, yeah, yeah. So then I get upset and I look at Polo and I yell, cause I got the microphone. Where the fuck is the baby? The crowd goes, where the fuck is the baby? Where the fuck is the baby? So now I'm like, Say ho, and they like say ho. Then I'm getting serious. Yo, where the fuck is the baby? Somebody in the crowd says, Yeah, where the fuck is the baby? Now the crowd doesn't realize that I'm a new mom and I'm a teen mom, and we really looking for the motherfucking baby. He only 17 days old, and we're not even thinking about the fact that the speakers are super loud because. I didn't think about hearing. I didn't think about, oh, what about the baby's hearing? I didn't know about that. You know, I'm, I'm literally on my own with this. And the fellas are only telling me the things that they might know. So all I know is that motherfucking baby need to have on hat, needs to have on socks. You need to feed it, love it, and keep it close. That's all I know. I don't really know too much else because, again, I'm a teen mom. And I'm a very, very young teen mom. So when I finally realized, like, I can't stay on the stage no more because at the end of the day, I'm starting to feel kind of funny. So as I'm feeling, you know, like, I'm feeling kind of funny, the next thing I know, Biz looks at me and says, you sweating from your shirt. I said, what? And he was like, yo, you sweating from your shirt. So he out there doing a the dance, and he's like, yeah. So then I look down, and I realize, shit, I'm lactating, like, that ain't fucking sweat. That's fucking milk coming out the front of my shirt. Like literally. Now, mind you, teen mom. And the reason why we can smile and laugh about it is because he's here. He's grown. We made it. We survived it. And it's definitely my hip hop history. But I had to tell y'all about it. Right. So then I realized somebody brings me the jacket. I put the jacket on. I zip the jacket up. I only got a few more minutes. And we still don't know where the fuck is the baby. And the crowd is still thinking that this is some new motherfucking song. So every time I say, where the fuck is the baby? The crowd's like, where the fuck is the baby? Where the fuck is the baby? And they doing the I don't know dance. So the whole fucking club is like, we don't fucking know where the baby at? Where the baby at? You know, so finally, where's the picture? Post the picture. Let me, let me just show you. Let me get this picture up here so that y'all can see. Okay. Now, you see? There the fuck is the baby. The baby is sitting right there on Cool G Rap's lap. And next to him is Polo. And they in the back in a green room where I wasn't even, I didn't even know at the time that they had already set up a green room and that they was back there in the green room and took him back there. But all I knew is that I was on stage performing and needed to know where the fuck is the baby. Please believe it, baby. So finally, I get off stage. I go over. I pick up the baby, whose name is Kareem, because now we don't have to call him the baby, you know, because after 17 days, you know, everybody keeps asking you, what is his name? What is his name? Who is he? What is his name? So his name is Kareem. And then I realized, like, wow, I am really, if not the first teen mom on tour in hip hop 
with a baby, with her crew, and they are helping me literally raise the baby. Now, that was the first time that I took him to a show, 17 days. So now as time goes on and, and you know, we getting accustomed to having him because now we know his name. So, you know, we start to ask, they start to inquire more. Yeah, where's Chuck at? Where's Kareem at? Where's Kareem at? Because we was calling him Kareem at the time. We didn't start calling him Chucky until he was about four. And we, named, we nicknamed him Chucky after the character from the movie. So that already shows you how he turned out by the time he was four. He was rocking them. Okay? So we're on tour. And a lady says, I'm watching, she, I'm talking to her. And she's telling me like, you know, all babies can naturally swim. So I'm thinking, can they? Now this is from being, this is from, now this is from being a teen mom on my own, you know, not really knowing what to do and, and, and how to do it. But all I know is that in order to raise a child, it has to be a lot of love and you just need to be present. You know, it's not about the presents that you give them. It's not about the fly clothes because baby, he wore some shit. I'm going to post all of that with my Dapper Dan story. That's going to come up next week. But Lady tells me, oh, yeah, you know, babies can swim. It's just natural. I said, okay. We're on tour. Now, I look at him. He looks at me. And I know he's probably saying, like, this teen mom shit is crazy. Like, they blast music. I'm staying in the hotels. You know, but the fact is, happy and loved. So me, MC Shan, Big Daddy Kane, Biz Marky, Master Ace, Cool G Rap, and Polo, Cut Master Cool V, we're all on tour. Now, we walk past the pool. Hmm, can all babies really swim? Let's see. Took Kareem and threw him in the pool. Now, we're standing around the pool. He didn't come right back up. Get in the pool, get the baby, get the baby, get the baby, get the baby. Now, mind you, I do have a picture, which I will post that for you next week because somebody took a picture after we jumped in the water and went and got the baby. But how he survived being on tour with us, eating cheese doodles and candy and, um, oh, and uh, ravioli. Well, not really ravioli because you used to like like spaghettios like in a little can because you know when you're on tour and you're on the tour bus that's the only thing that you could put in the microwave and back then microwaves were dangerous that shit was a whole different type of microwave it wasn't like the microwaves of today that shit was like almost like riding around with a little bomb so he you know it was just a way of being able to say man look at this so when i look at my son today which ladies y'all know because i post him up on instagram fine as a Fuck, okay, please believe me, baby. I should, I, I should call him. In. Somebody go, somebody go, somebody go get the baby. Somebody, hold on, somebody go get the baby and bring him in to me. Hold on, I'm gonna send somebody out to go and get him. Please believe it, baby. Hey, Miss Virgo. Hey, hey, Jared. Hey, Jeffrey. That's right. Hey, everybody. Hey, Noah. How are you, Noah? How's everybody? Come here for a second, Chuck. Come here, come here for one second. Come here for a second. Come down, son. See, y'all can see the baby. <laughs> see, that's the baby right there. Please believe it. Wait, wait you, gotta, you gotta, you gotta step into, step into the light, son. Step into the light, son. Let me see. Hey, you now. Can they see him? Look, look at that. That's my that's my whole face. Please believe it, baby. That's what I'm talking about. See what didn't I tell you? Didn't listen, Miss Virgo. Didn't I tell you what the fuck? Huh? Okay, that's what I'm saying. See, there's the baby. But let me just tell y'all this. <laughs> hey, Kamisa, don't worry. There the fuck is the baby. That's what I'm talking about. Okay, see what I'm saying? Absolutely, twin. That's that's what everyone says. But I am so thankful for him. And I'm saying this to everyone who has been teen parents. I'm saying this to even a teen who is a parent right now. Listen, things turn out good. It's all about love. It's all about your presence. It's all about being there to support them. And they will be there to support you. Now, my son 
make sure that everything goes well for me. Literally, when I tell you he is my fact checker, um, he makes sure that whatever it is that I take care of, like he takes care of my business, like literally we have switched roles. And the reason why I'm putting that out there to you is because sometimes people feel like it's very difficult and it can be. But when you have hip hop in it, baby, when you're raising them with hip hop, when you're raising them with cussing, when you're raising them with profanity, when you're raising them with R-rated movies, sometimes X-rated. It depends on what the fuck you was watching. It just depends on what the fuck was going on. But the catch is, it's all about the love and respect. And then they have the same thing for you. So from the very first night when we were like, where the fuck is the baby? You know, to now see the, the man that he has became. That's me, that's God, and that's hip hop, baby. That's what that is. Please believe it. Now, if somebody asks me to, um, hey, y'all, absolutely, that's what I'm talking about. Peace and blessings to you, Paul. Okay. Hey, Darrell. Okay. Now, a lot of people ask me about my performance over this weekend. Now, usually I would, my story would be longer, but I knew that people were asking me about my performance this past weekend where I performed in Atlantic City. Shout out to, that's right, amen. That's right, true blessing, Shinari. Now, look, if I pronounce your name incorrectly, then um, call back, come, you know, make sure you're back here next week and I'll get the shit right because I'll make sure the crew, hey, Roxanne, shout out your music was the shit. I'm from the suburbs of Chicago, a small city called Harvey World. I am 48 years old and I was raised up on rap and loved your music, loved this podcast. Can I get a shout out? Okay, of course you can get a shout out. Now, I heard you say your name was Mike. But, but, uh, and, and so I'm going to think that that's what you want me to say. So, hey, Mike Casting. And if that's not it, then Mikolos Casting, Casting, you, whoever that, that, that name, please believe it. So, um, my performance, incredible. Not like, not saying my performance wasn't, my performance was good. I do what I do. You know what I mean? That's right, Johanna. We raise motherfucking miracles. Hey, Rome. Hey, Tyrone. Milwaukee on the check-in. Okay, that's what I'm saying. Yeah, teen moms who raise miracles. There's a lot of great people out there that was raised by teen moms. Teen moms is the bomb. You know why? And I'm not saying that I'm encouraging people to become teen, teen moms because it's not an easy process. But the fact is, when you do raise them, baby. Hmm. Streets don't lie already. You already know, Lorenzo. Streets don't lie. People lie, but not the streets. Okay. There you go, Erica, in an old school way. Yes, you have. Okay. So wait, let me just tell y'all. Wait, let me just tell y'all about the performance. Okay. So here. So I'm in Atlantic City, Boardwalk Hall, and I walk into Boardwalk Hall. And as y'all know, big shout out to Cutmaster Cool V. He is doing fine. He'll be back up on the show on Monday. So as I get up on the stage, I'm looking and it hit me just at that time, like, boom, I had no biz. I had no cool V. And usually at every performance like that, Kango would pop up. So when I looked around, I was like, you know what I'm saying? Big shout out to DJ Faze who stepped in. Um, I realized that I didn't have anyone around me like my juice crew wasn't there and you see we've been rocking since we were literally babies and um so now i'm looking and i feel like this this feeling comes over me like shante like wow what are you gonna do so i get out there and i look over to my right this is my right because i'm facing this i mean to y'all it might look like i was facing left but to my right, I looked over to my right, and in the shadows was Big Daddy Kane. Now, Kane never comes early to a show, never. And um, I look over, and when I look over, I see the dark figure standing there in the shadows, looking like dark chocolate, like a chocolate covered mound. Maybe, a, no, not an Almond Joy, because I don't like the Almond Joys. Almond Joys got nuts. You know, I just got these teeth. I ain't fucking up my shit with Almond Joys. Man, looking like just dark chocolate gourmet shit. So I look over in the corner, and I see Kane, and I get this relief. Because I know, because he's over there like a, like a Marvel character. We could call him like, hmm, the Blacker Panther. That's what he was looking like, the Blacker Panther over there in the corner. But it let me know that if I got out here on this stage and something went wrong, 
he was going to come out here and he was going to save me. So I did my show and everything went well. Shout out to anybody that was there. Anybody that was there that got a chance to see the show in Atlantic City. Shout out to y'all. Hey, Andy, how are you? Please believe it. Um, hey, Carl, how are you? Jeffrey, how are you? So anyway, it, it gave me this feeling to let me know that I could and I would be okay. And um, I did my show and I walked off stage. I cried because I was sad a little bit. I was, but I was also relieved. And I hugged my sister Monique and my sister Mercedes was there for me and, you know, hugged. And then Kane said, you okay? You did a good job. You got this. And it just felt so good, you know, and um, I'm glad Kovi is coming back. Rest in peace to Biz. Rest in peace to Kango. Um, and rest in peace to all of our fallen, fallen soldiers, DMX. But baby, motherfucking Luke Scott. Luke got up there. Uncle Luke got up that motherfucker. Because I was thinking, like, he can't be bringing the old motherfucking dancers from back then. Because motherfuckers ain't going to be dropping it and getting the fuck right back up. They just can't do it. It just won't be fucking possible. You know what I'm saying? So he got out there. Shout out to the young ladies that were rocking with Luke. They got out there. Don't stop. Pop that pussy. That may say that up. They did the damn thing. Mystical. Shout out to motherfucking Mystical. Shake your ass. Watch yourself. Shake your ass. Show me what you're working with. I don't know the words, but y'all know what the fuck I'm talking about. That part. But anyway, all of that shit. That was good shit too. And um, shout out to the alumni, Moni Love, uh, you know, Kwame, Mr. Polka Dot himself, Dana Dane, Dana Dane with Fang, Dana Dane with Fang. Oh my goodness, KRS One, KRS One. Incredible show. Big Daddy Kane, you already know. Slick Rick. So I say this to say for all you motherfuckers that missed it, Make sure, there you go. Look at you, Ray Brown. You see what I'm saying? Be at the next motherfucking joint. Okay, there you go. Rome, you know my freestyle. Listen, I'm a, since it's just us, let me tell y'all the truth. I freestyle my shit because I don't remember my songs. I just want to be honest with y'all. I feel like we've known each other. Like we've been rocking now for a few weeks. I can fucking tell y'all that. I get up on stage, I freestyle. Thank God for my freestyle abilities. But I freestyle? Because I can't remember the motherfucking songs. That's right. Oh, you worked with me at Foxwoods. Okay. Yeah. Well, MC Light definitely got to be on one because I yeah, let me cha-cha-cha with this Mardi Gras. I'm the dopest female that you heard thus far. Damn, I wish they would have put the camera on my feet because that was the first time I really had the rhythm with my motherfucking arms at the same time. I usually don't get that shit to flow, but that shit flowed so good just then. Please believe it, baby. So, hey, Bear. Hey, Danny. Um, so great to be able to see you again. That's right. It does. Uh, Natalia. How are you, Natalia? Okay. So, back to that. So, now I know the feeling of being able to still get out there, get the love and the feeling from the crowd. Great performance. Great show. Um, shout out to, you know, all of the reads. Shout out to, you know, the block is hot promotions. Shout out to every fucking body. Please believe it. Hey, Bartel, how are you? Hey, Beverly. Good evening. That's what I'm talking about, baby. Andy, everybody. Yeah, that was a classic moment. It really was because it gave me that feeling to know that for many, hip hop is music. Hip hop is just a genre of music. But for me, that's my culture. You know what I'm saying? And just like, like it being with anyone else, there's going to be some things about it that go right and some things that go wrong, you know, and, um, but main thing is, it's your culture. You can't deny it. I'll be hip hop until the day I die, you know, and, and that's just me. That's, that's what it is. Like I play hip hop gets me through everything. If I'm sad, you know, I will play heavy D. If I got a check in the mail, I'll play Jay-Z. If I feel that I need a little spiritual, a little, if I feel like my spirit needs a little enhancing, I play DMX. You know, uh, every, it seems to me like every artist in hip hop works for me within a certain emotion. 
You know what I'm saying? If I want to, I go all the way to the West Coast. If I'm feeling real gangster and don't give a fuck about shit, I'll do that. If I play bumpy knuckles, that means that I'm ready to fight. Like if I play bumpy knuckles, that means we get ready to bump knuckles. And then that's just how it's going to be. Like I'll, I, I'll do that. Like my garbage can keep missing. I play bumpy knuckles when I come out, I have a blast and out the motherfucking house. But, you know, there are times where, you know, I will play JJ Fad because I want to laugh and giggle with my grands. Um, salt and pepper because I'm feeling sexy and, 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 and want to talk about sex or whatever, you know, just different artists do different things for me. And, and I love them all because it's such a great hip hop is the shit. Do you know that? Like, that's why you're watching this right now because hip hop is the shit. Let's see what we got up here. Yes. I know that's right. Oh, um, thank you so much. Thank you so much, sweetie. You know what I'm saying? Okay. Listen, you know, we home girls. I've seen you, Biz, Kane, Molly, all music is okay. This shit moving too fast. Y'all know I need glasses. I was trying to strain on it, but I just couldn't. Once to scroll up. Hey, Mark, Michael, uh, thank you. Big respect to you too. You know I appreciate this. And like I said, you always got to tell a friend and tell a friend when I'm up here telling these hip hop stories again because that's just what I do. I feel that if I let you know more about me, then you'll love. Roxy and Shante even motherfucking more. That's what the fuck I'm talking about. Like, I was getting ready to try to say some old spiritual rights, you know what I'm saying, some old good shit, but that's what the fuck it is. You know, you get to know more about me, and you get to see more about the artists, and you get to hear the stories of other artists, too. Because, see, I didn't even get a chance to tell y'all about the time when I sold penicillin on tour. I might just have to save that one, because I made more money selling motherfucking penicillin than I did selling motherfucking tickets. And I'm going to tell you, oh, okay. They was giving me a signal like, don't tell everybody business. Don't tell everybody business. Okay, well, don't worry about it. But uh, two more podcasts in, <laughs> I'm going to already motherfucking let y'all know. I did laundry on tour, all of that good shit. Please believe it. That's right, Keith. I, can't, I keep it 150 because I'm 50 and I keep it 100. You get it like 150? Okay, that didn't work. Hey, Erica, how are you? Um, thank you, Tony Marie. I love that you love my story, sweetie. Okay, we go back to taps on baby. That's right. Put some motherfucking taps on them shits. That's what I'm talking about, please. I just love how you drop jewels and always keep it one. I don't know how else to be, but to be me. The R-O-X-A-N-N-E. -N -E. That's right. You'll be able to watch this podcast every Wednesday. I am live right here on Rock the Bells YouTube channel and, of course, Rock the Bells Facebook. And if you come into the comments in the chat, you know I'm going to shout you out because I'm just like that. Please believe it, baby. Don't forget that there is the radio show, which is called Have a Nice Day with Myself and Cutmaster Cool B. Baby, we are on Sirius XM channel 43 every day, Monday through Friday from 4 p.m. to 7 p.m. Always tune in for the OG question of the day. Something strictly for the OG. Oh, my film was cool. Thank you so much. I'm a phenomenal woman. You better tell that shit. Hi, baby. That's right. Saying that to motherfucking Brian. How are you? Hey, Tony. There you go, Tony. Queen it is. Please believe it, baby. Thank you so much. So, this is Roxanne Chante, and this is your Have a Nice Podcast for today. Have a nice day. Have a nice day.